Hello. So when you build a prototype, uh, things often uh, gel in a different way than you expected, and that's the case here. So uh, I built that um, that tower prototype, but I'm actually going to switch over and work on a different but related game because it allowed me to explore a certain kind of element, a certain kind of gameplay element, and now uh, that's made me want to try a different gameplay element that has more um, flexibility, more uh, uh, it lasts longer and has more depth. So this is a new project and this one's going to be about spaceships because about half of my games are about spaceships. Uh, the difference is that this one's actually going to be more about the crew uh, and less about the actual ship. So this is just a new project, doesn't have anything in it. Let's go ahead and get it set up with some of the stuff we're going to need. Uh, I didn't mean to add a script, I meant to add a folder. Uh, and we're also going to go ahead and add in skyboxes. We're going to go ahead and add in the uh, uh, the one skybox that we'll need for this, which would be the Starry Night skybox. We don't need any of these other ones. They'll just get in the way. Maybe that one. All right. So. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to start off by setting the foundation for our input controls. Um, in the past, we've generally left this until a little bit later on, uh, and I did in fact do this for the tower prototype, but I don't think that I uploaded that many of the tower prototype uh, examples. So we're going to do that first here. And the basic idea is that it can be quite difficult for you to handle a lot of complex layers and controls. Uh, you know, you got menus eight layers deep, and then you got a pop-up that scales back and forth, and all sorts of other crazy stuff. Uh, and you don't want to get lost in that. So I generally create a controller, a centralized uh, input controller, which in this case I'll just call it IOCON, uh, and we'll put it on the main camera like so. Uh, oh yeah, in addition, we'll want the main camera to have a skybox on it. So. Uh, Where is the skybox? There it is. Skybox. So the basic idea behind any kind of centralized input controller is that you have a stack of things that can be uh, uh, that that are on the. You, you have a stack of things that can take input control. So that's what we're going to build right now. We need a couple of things. First off, we're going to need a way to find the main IOCON class, the active one. And we'll just set that here. We're also going to need a... Uh, uh, we're going to want to have a list of uh, mono behaviors that are in control, that are in our control stack. So any uh, mono behavior, and this is a mono behavior, almost all of the scripts are mono behaviors, any mono behavior that wants to take control can sign up for this control stack. But you'll notice that this is a static variable, meaning it's on a class, but this is actually a member of the individual instantiation. So every IO controller has a different control stack. And the reason for that is because we want to be able to edit this in the Unity window, in the Unity editor. And we wouldn't be able to do that if it was static, uh, just to show you what I mean. You can see how we can edit the control stack here, but we can't edit the global IO, the, the static, the, we can't edit the static variable. Um, and you can't edit static variables in this uh, inspector, it just doesn't work for a variety of reasons. So that's why the control stack has to be on the individual member, the individual instantiation, the, the specific script. But we do want to have a quick way to access it, so let's go ahead and build one. And the way we do that is we use getters and setters. Uh, these are invaluable, and if you haven't gotten around to learning them, you probably should. These are really great. Uh, so when we want to get something, we first go ahead and get our uh, our primary active controller, which we'll just call C. And the reason is because otherwise we'll have a lot of spelling, you know, a lot of blah dot blah dot blah dot blah dot blah, uh, and this makes our stuff shorter. 
Uh, so then we just say if c.controlStack.count equals zero, return null. There's nobody in control. Otherwise, return c.controlStack c.controlStack.count minus one. Now we also have to do a setter. So that's what we're going to do here, set. So when we're doing a setter, there's a couple of things that might happen. The first is that they might actually pass us a null value. And that means uh, that that's going to be our shorthand for pop me off the stack. I don't want control anymore. And if that happens, we're just going to pop the top number off the stack. So c.controlStack.remove at c.controlStack.count minus one. Uh, however, if it's not null, there are a couple of things we want to do. The first thing is we want to make sure that we're not already on the stack. If we already have the value, then if, uh, if our active controller, if our control stack is the value, sorry, if our active controller equals value, then we don't need to do anything because uh, we're already set to doing that. Otherwise, we need to remove it at where it was and put it at the end. Now, if none of those special cases are true, we just add it. And in this way, we have a very quick method of creating a stack that will be very, very flexible later on when we need it to be. Uh, and the way we're going to use it is whenever we need to use something, we'll go something like this. If iocon.activeController equals this, or does not equal this, then return. Just very basic stuff like this. Uh, this kind of setup, uh, you can do it using uh, uh, registering events. But uh, in this case, I don't want to do it regi with registering events. Um, and this will work better for us in the medium term. So this is how we're going to do it. This is going to be the primary piece of code that we build this particular episode. I don't have any particular interest in building anything else at the moment. Um, so that's it. And I will see you next episode.